Hello, everyone. We're live as opposed to being dead. Well, that was dark. I shouldn't have fucking started this off like that. Let's do this again. Hello, everybody. Excitement. Oh, <clears throat> okay. So all the people that are here, hello. Go ahead and tell us where you are from in the chat so we could say hello from blankety blank blank. Yeah, and those of you who have been here for a minute and um, seen the chat, um, I um, am on my cheat day for the four-hour body diet thing I'm doing. And I ate like a sick pig today and now feel like a sick pig. There is so much sugar running through my body and wanting me to crash, but I will not crash. Not yet. We will not crash yet. Germany and Wyoming. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, and I am here in sunny Los Angeles, California, looking out at mail people, like, who deliver the mail, obviously. I'm not being super. And um, there is somebody who is running types of lawn equipment, and I'm hoping that they freaking stop, because there is nothing worse than trying to have a conversation with your dear friends on the interwebs when some dude is having some sort of weird lawn care orgy outside, especially when no one has a lawn. It's all sidewalks and concrete. Um, but, you know, some people just like to trim bushes and cut limbs out of trees uh okay write it bunny's writing the lawn care orgy poem everybody <clears throat> all right so um we're we're still we're still vamping a little bit letting everyone roll in and when you get here get in the chat and tell us where you're from and um, we are going to have a, a wonderful, wonderful, um, wonderful nooner here because it is noon here. Um, I realize that that word has different connotations, so I apologize. God, I'm talking about orgies and nooners already. Ah. Uh, Hasn't even started yet. Good Lord. Put on the brakes, man. All right. So make sure. Nottingham. Hello. 8 p.m. Oh, in Germany, it's only 9 p.m. I always think that Germany and um, England are much farther away than, say, like, California and New Mexico, but maybe it's about the same distance. That's weird. That is weird. So everybody, make sure you have either a pen and paper or a pencil and, um, I don't know, a cave wall to write on. Um, you will need to be taking some sort of notes or you could just do it on your computer if you're one of those fancy people like me who are doing this on some sort of computer apparatus. Oh, fun and fun and fun. And if you, um, I mean, not that this is going to make sense because you guys are already here, so I'm not really talking to anybody. But if you, hello from Nebraska. Nice. We got some some good Midwest representation in the chat. Holy macaroons. Um, but yeah, so if you miss one of these days, 
Um, the video will be up on my channel, but hopefully you won't. Hopefully um, you will be here for each day we do here. And um, there will be um, kind of writing assignments, okay? And you don't have to do them. If you do do them, you will be getting more out of this. And you don't have to send them to me um, or post them or whatever. But it would be cool if you did. And we will talk about um, what you do if you do that. So... Um, just to keep it fresh in everybody's mind, you could either send whatever you do to I hate Matt Wall at gmail.com, or if your balls are swinging low, you can actually, once the stream is over, obviously, and the video is um, the replay videos up on my YouTube, you could try to copy and paste your work into the comments. If that's something you want to do, if you don't want to do that, I completely understand it. That's kind of um, that's kind of permanent, let's say. So, with that said, let's get into this. Oh, and real quick, how this is going to go: um, half of this is going to be me, like this this week. Each time we do this, so Monday through Thursday, because Friday is something completely different, and we'll talk about that later. But um, half of this is going to be me talking to you guys, giving you guys ideas, telling you what works for me, um, things like that. And then the second half of each little um, class thing we do here is going to be Q&A time. So if you have questions, write them down. Um, so you could remember what they are, uh, because normally when I say, okay, and now it's time for questions, everyone's like, oh, oh shit. And like, they completely forget like what they were going to ask in the first place. So if you have a question, write them down. If you do put a question in the chat, I will try to get back to it. But um, I don't know, like sometimes things with chat stream, um, Uppy and downies don't work well. I'm a writer. I said uppy and downies. So that's fine. So now that all of us creators, all of us mad scientists, all of us anarchists are together here to do something, let's fucking do it. So for those of you who do not know me and my life background shit, here is a super fast, um, I guess, little resume as to why I feel like I should be even opening my mouth telling you guys anything. Um, I have been a full-time creator since 2001, 2001, and um, not really very good at it until about 2003, 2004. Um, and then it just kept growing and growing. So I started with music and I was in bands from the day, whatever, um, before like high school and stuff, I was always making like little comic books and writing little, um, zines before I even knew what a fucking zine was. And we'll talk about zines at a later date too. Um, but I was in bands, was writing music for bands. I was writing music and lyrics for other bands that I was friends with. Um, and then from there, I started making uh, music videos for my band and a couple friends' bands. And then I was a part of a record label. <clears throat> that record label got absorbed by a film distribution company the film distribution company thought it would be cool if some of the music from the bands on the label were in the movies that they were putting out. And then it got to the point where it would be cool if we cross promoted and put some of the people from the bands in the movies we were putting out. And then that turned into, um, Hey, you should be directing more music videos for these people. And then that turned into, Hey, why don't you direct a movie for us? And then that got me on an eight-year journey of um, making 
feature films. And I made um, 60, anywhere from 55 to 60 um, low budget horror usually, but um, indie films for a few different companies um, over eight years under the name Creep Creeperson, because that was the name I was in the band with and everything like that. And then I got tired of making movies because um, that's a whole other thing. And I started writing books. And then the books were so easy to write and I didn't have anyone else to deal with. And I just kept writing and writing and writing and writing and writing and um, doing novels, short stories, serials. And then I finally ended up coming back to poetry, which was kind of like the first literary thing I had ever done back when I was um, in high school and coming out of high school, like 18 and 19. And um, I still write novels, I still write short stories, and I still write music, and I still make movies, actually. But the focus of everything I create is poetry. And tomorrow, we're going to be talking about why I feel like poetry is a good place for a lot of people to start, whatever your creative journey um, is, whether it's um, screenplays or making movies or music or even art, painting, drawing, sculpting, um, acting. We'll, we'll talk about all that stuff as things go on. But um, hello, EJ. But um, this is my life. You know, this is what I do. And um, a lot of people say to me, and one of the reasons why I thought to do this class like this, this time is because I was, have, it, it wasn't a fucking dinner party. There were like people at my house and I was already half drunk. So um, there were people and we were drinking and um, there were all these people talking about what they do and all these people have jobs and shit. And they're like, what do you do? I'm like, well, you know, I'm a writer, I guess I write poetry and, you know, music and movies and you know and they were all like well that's so brave you know that's really brave that you do that and you can you you make it and stuff i'm like well you know it's not like i sometimes make it and i sometimes don't you know um, i make it more often than i don't but at the same time i never know how much money's coming in because everything's based on sales of all the different things on all the different platforms and stuff some months are good, some months are bad. Um, and I was just like saying, I'm like, it's so crazy because like, like people who have like job jobs and like do the thing, do the societal thing, you know, they could plan their future. They could plan vacations, you know, they could do these things. And I can't really do that because I never know what's coming in. And um, basically this chick said, she's like, you need to stop selling yourself short because what you're doing is amazing. And I was like, oh. And it's really hard for me to take compliments or anything like that. Um, and I don't really talk about it. But I'm sharing all this stuff with you because people who don't do what I do find it inspiring. And... As I was talking to all these people, everyone's like, you know what? I'm going to start, I'm going to start painting. I think I'm going to start writing something. And I'm like, yeah, just fucking do it. Like, yeah, you know, like, yeah, do those things. So if my tragic fucking life is inspiring to you to be able to fucking go, you know what, dude, I'm going to fucking do something, then do those things. And that's fucking awesome. And I'm glad I could be some kind of service to you. Um, so real quick, the people in the chat, um, how many of you guys have uh, either taken writing workshops before or who have um, like taken classes, whether it's in school or college or university, um, any kind of like writing um, thing that would be interesting? Like what have you have you done it before? And if so, what kind? Um, that would be interesting to know. <clears throat> while you guys are doing that um, to give you a little more about this week. This week is going to be 
well for real quick like like bunny's in the chat and bunny was in both of the poetic anarchy courses that happened before this one and this one is going to be very very different and this week we're doing kind of like a bite-sized crash course into what the full course is going to be like <clears throat> But I really think just this right here, if this is the only thing you do, this is totally going to fucking help you. Um, I've written on my own, but never had any lessons or published anything. Very cool. Very cool. So we will get that different. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Where are we? Okay. So. All the things that we're going to be talking about. Um, Hannah, I have an MA in creative writing, but still not published. Well, first off, good job on the fucking MA, dude. That's a lot of fucking work. So cheers to you on that. Um, I'm trying to hydrate myself. I had way too much horrible food this morning. Um, I took an entry level English writing class in college. We pretty much just learned about writing research papers. So no, no experience with creative writing. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Um, everything that we're going to be going over in here this week. Um, yes, it's going to help you in every like avenue of your creative ventures, your writing life and all that stuff. But a lot of these things like kind of transcend writing. Like a lot of the stuff that we're going to be talking about is actual like help you in life stuff. So for instance, I have um, some kind of, um, social issues that are very difficult. I have a hard time going out in public when it's really busy and really loud. Um, I get really anxious and shit. But a lot of the things that we're going to be going through in here are the exact same things that help me get through just doing those little things, just going to the store, just going to crowded places. Um, a lot of these things help me in just navigating um, social experiences, like networking. Um, for those of you who are in any kind of career or business where there is a lot of networking, networking is fucking murder sometimes. Some people are so fucking good at it, like you just watch them and you're like, fucking hell. Like, give that person the fucking Oscar. That was amazing. But other people, especially creative types, the introverted creative types, have a really fucking hard time just being able to be in a place. And then once you're in that place around those people, to then be able to fucking talk about yourself and plug how fucking awesome you are. Um, uh, I have no formal writing training mostly like creating characters from that experience. I started, started writing my stories after my divorce. Oh shit, man. I feel ya. It gives you a new perspective on life. Um, so GM, is that the same thing as like, um, like dungeon master kind of thing? Um, with the RPG games. Cause that's actually, for those of you who are into D and D or anything like that, or doing role playing games like that, that on the fly, yeah, that on the fly um, creation is actually a really fucking good exercise. Just to hang on, there's going to be a very loud truck driving up the street. Um, it's a really good exercise to keep you like going fast, moving quick to be able to like, when a situation comes up, 
like something happens, you have to be able to tell the rest of the story to the people in your party and you got to do it fast or else you're going to start losing interest to the people playing. Um, thanks, man. I think it's inspiring how many forms of creativity you have done. Oh, thank you, Hannah. That's very nice of you. Um, and that's another thing. Taking compliments is very fucking hard. And I've learned when people compliment you, you just have to say thank you. Um, that sounds really fucking stupid, but that right there, me being able to just say, oh, thank you. That's years of fucking therapy. <laughs> that's so fucking embarrassing to have to say that out loud. But seriously, that is like years of me going to therapy. And then finally someone just saying, all you have to do is say thank you when someone compliments you. Oh, shit. Because like I've always thought like when someone compliments me, I'm supposed to say, oh, no, that's not true. Or then if they compliment me, I go, oh, shit, now I'm fucking indebted to this person and I have to, like, save their life next time they cross the street. What the fuck am I supposed to do now? And it gets all fucking crazy and weird. But thank you, Hannah. And that was very um, a big step for me. All right. So <clears throat> everything in here, again, will help you in your writing and also help you in life. Um, and this whole thing is for you to get to know you. And I said that in the videos before, but this is the most fucking crucial thing in the goddamn world. You have to understand who you are in order to fucking write and write from right here, okay? You can go to any fucking class in the world and they will tell you, these are the rules for doing this and that. And this is what you have to do. This is good. This is bad. These are these things. These words mean this and all this other shit and give you all of the, I don't know, um, skeleton of what you would need to put into any kind of writing. But a lot of times what they don't tell you is all you need is to fucking know yourself and be honest with yourself. And that is so much of what we're going to be doing here. And because this whole thing's called poetic anarchy and the whole idea of this is to do whatever you want, it is extremely hypocritical for me to be teaching you or telling you what to do. So with that said, um, there is, how do I say this? Everything that we're going to be going over, a lot of it is stuff you probably already know about yourself, but haven't accepted. You haven't just allowed these things to happen. All of this is just about you getting to know you. And I guarantee that when this week is over, when we're done with this, you're going to have such a better understanding about yourself and you will, you will be able to push that through into your work whatever medium you're working in, okay? Um, nothing that I'm going to be telling you is fucking gospel. What this whole thing is, because everybody's different. Everybody creates differently. Everyone learns differently. So if I say something to you and you're like, oh, that doesn't sit right with me. I don't know if I feel that. Then fucking throw that away. I don't give a shit, you know? This is just me giving you the ideas and the tools that have helped me be able to do these things. So if this is helpful for you, then you do that too. And if you don't like it, you don't have to do it. Just take the stuff that works. And if you find something that works, go with it. And that you know what they say, if it's not broken, don't fix it. So if something is working for you, you fucking milk that motherfucker for all it's got. You know what I'm saying? Um, tomorrow, again, we're going to be talking about why I want to start all of this like creative writing and all this stuff with poetry. So we'll probably hit this again, but what this poetry is going to be for each of you, this is going to be your, your mistress, your preacher, your confidant, your lover, your fucking therapist, your goddamn Yoda. Like, your writing is going to be 
everything to you, your best friend. It will be everything you need it to be if you allow it to be that thing. Okay. So that might um, be getting a little like mystical here, but it doesn't have to be mystical. All you have to do is be fucking honest with yourself and be fucking real. And if you do that, you're, you're already done. Everything, and this is something we'll, we talk about a lot, every single thing that you're ever going to write, it's already been written somewhere in here. You know what I'm saying? It's already out here. And all you have to do is grasp those things and then just put them on the paper. And that might sound really lofty right now and very vague right now, but you'll understand what I'm talking about as this goes. So it doesn't have to be that um, chaotic, let's say, or um, scary. Um, but again, all you have to do is just be honest with yourself and the words that you create and everything else just falls from there. Um, again, you don't have to share any of the stuff that you're working on with anyone. You don't even have to share it with me, although I do, 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 do want to read your stuff. So again, um, and we'll talk about that more when we get down there. <clears throat> so um, the most important thing, like kind of step one, I guess, with all this stuff is you need to be honest and creative, okay, with two things right off the bat. And once you do that with those two things, everything else will fall together. So you need to be honest and creative with your observations. Um, and, uh, okay, we'll get into this. <clears throat> and I've talked a little bit about this before, and some of you might have heard me do this. But you are very, very unique. There is no one in the world like you because... Your whole life up until this point, you have experiences that nobody else has. Yes, some of us have shared experiences, but not any other person in the world has the exact same stacked experiences that you have, okay? So how you see things are going to be completely different than how somebody else sees things, okay? You guys can be looking at the exact same thing. <clears throat> I like to use the example of either a butterfly or a car accident. If all of us who are in the chat right now, <clears throat> if all of us saw the exact same car accident and I'm like, okay, now all of us write about that car accident, we would observe what we observe. And then when we get to the second thing, reflection and how that, um, how we internalize and then bring that out, that is completely based on our own uniqueness. So we observe something and then through our experience, we then put that back out onto the paper or something like that. And every single one of us will have a completely different thing written out. Like not one of these things will sound anything like the other. Yes, it'll be like, oh, that SUV flipped over or that butterfly is yellow. After that, it's a completely different fucking thing. And that is one of the most exciting things about creating, that all of us are creators. All of us are fucking mad scientists breaking the rules and trying to come up with our own way of making this thing have life and doing it. You know, um, it's just, um, it's a wonderful thing to see. And what I like about the class setting is that you see these things happen in real time. So I could sit here and say that all of us are going to write something and it'll all be completely different. But unless you're in a situation where there's a bunch of people all writing something and then we share those bits of writing, then we're like, oh my fucking God. Yeah. All of these things are different. This is fucking crazy. And um, we'll talk about, um, objectivity and subjectivity at a later date. Um, yeah, I won't even get into that right now. We'll come back to that. So um, what you need to do is that all writing, all writing should elicit some sort of reaction from your readers. And it doesn't have to be a huge reaction. 
um, it's supposed to make your readers feel something. It's supposed to have them see what you're seeing. The, the reader is now looking through your eyes and it's your job to let them know how what you are talking about has made you feel so they could then feel that same kind of thing. Um, and so every word has to matter. Every line has to matter. And this is my big thing. All these things have to matter, but they have to matter in as few of words as possible because that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get a point across. We're trying to get what needs to be gotten quickly and concisely and simply. And um, that is a big thing that we will be going over. But so for those of you who um, are super talented, those of you who don't feel like you're super talented, none of that matters because from this point on, all of your talent is left outside. We leave that at the door. We don't have to worry about talent. Because our emotions, our observations, our reflections, none of these things matter with talent. Like, it's not the same thing. It, they're, they're two completely different things that have nothing to do with each other. Um, we also need to leave our fear at the door. And the two biggest fears that I see writers have is the obvious one, fear of failure. And there is no failure if you do something. If you write, if you're afraid of writing something because you don't know, I just don't know, and then you write it, no matter what happens after that, you already succeeded. You, you wrote the thing. The thing is done. You succeeded. So there, there is no failure. Any attempt at doing something is success because you're doing something, especially all of you who are sitting here going, like, dude, I've wanted to do this for so many years. I've always wanted to do this, and I just haven't done it yet. And there's a million reasons, but I haven't done those things yet. Just starting is success. Just picking up the pen and writing the title down. You already won. You succeeded by just fucking sitting down and doing it. You know, so um, congratulations in advance to everyone who's going to fucking finally do the thing that they've always fucking wanted to do. The second fear is perfection. A lot of people fear that their stuff isn't good enough. That is where I start like slamming my fist on tables. Your stuff is good enough because it came from you. That's it. There is no objectivity in art okay there there is in academia because there are things that people put on things so they can judge it and by judging it it gives them a sense of superiority if they could say i think this is better than this and this is when we're going to be talking about objectivity and subjectivity but in art, in expressing yourself, in doing anything creative, there is no objectivity because the art, this is so important. The art is you doing. The art isn't, do people accept this? That's not at all what art is. The art is you fucking doing the thing. That is the most important thing on the fucking planet. You have to do the thing. That is the perfection. That is the art. So there should never be fear. I was like, I don't know if this is any good. I had um, some people, and I've had this in every class. Somebody comes up and they all say like, um, well, I don't know if I could write, but I guess we'll see. And what that statement says, that statement is giving you an out in case you fear the failure in case you in case you sense that oh well you know i i said i'd give it a try but you know i told him i don't know if i could write if you can write an email if you can write a comment if you can pick up a pen if you can hit record on a voice memo you can do this and you've already done it 
Every time you have written anything, the words you choose to put in that comment, all the comments here in the chat, all of those words, how they are seen on that chat box, those were picked by you to be put in that order. Um, when you use an ellipses in there, when you do anything like that, <clears throat> that is you creating. If I asked each of you to say, um, like Thomas's comment here about um, GM'd RPG games, if I had all of you guys read that once and then like look away from it and then write that same thing back to me, <clears throat> it would probably all be in your words, in your how you put that out and they would all sound a little different. Okay. And that is because we are all creators. We create all the time. We create every day. When you get up and you make a cup of coffee, when you make eggs in the morning or whatever, however you do it, you are creating. When you decide I'm going to brush my hair and this is how I'm going to do my hair today. That is you creating. When you go, what shirt goes with these pants? Oh, fuck. I'm going to do that. That is you creating. You are mixing. You are matching. You are a living fucking collage. You are a fucking artist. So now all you have to do is accept the fact that you are a fucking artist and fucking consciously create things. Okay? So that is really, really probably the simplest way to go about this. And... Um, another way to do it is, um, I don't know if any of you have kept a diary or a journal. Um, there's a lot to be learned about keeping a journal and a diary. <clears throat> and I don't keep a journal or a diary because I write all the time. And most of the stuff I write are personal experiences and I date those. So every thing I write every day when I sit down and write is usually my fucking journal entries. But the difference between a journal entry and poetry or a journal entry and journalism. And again, this is something that we're going to spend a whole day on in the real, the full class. When you are writing in your journal or your diary, you're basically going, it's almost like a list. These are the things that happened to me today. And I was mad or I was so happy this happened. Okay. When you need to convey that into poetic form, you would do that same thing, say those same things, but make it more concise. You would lose words that you don't need. You would lose like all your not all of them, but a lot of the conjunctions, the the wor the words that connect words together. So like you you might not have so many a's and ands and thes and stuff like that. You might um, use more metaphor. Um, you might use more simile. You might do these things. You might um, make your line breaks different. But the whole idea, when you write a journal, that is to remind you of your life and the things that have happened. But when you're writing that poem, the difference is, is you're trying to make the reader feel how you felt, or you're trying to just elicit some sort of feeling from that reader. So it's the exact same thing, but now we got to come up with ways to hit those points. So the best way to do those things Come on, car. Come on. Oh, it's a school bus. Come on. Is it, it's, it's fucking noon and it's summer. Why is there a school bus on my road? Okay. So the best way to do this is to write your poems, write your poetry like you're talking to a best friend. All right? Like when you're writing in your diary, sometimes I think when we're younger, like, we're like, oh, dear diary, oh my gosh, would you believe what happened today? Blah, 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 blah. But as we get older, we don't have time for that. And we're just like, fuck, like, goddamn fucking gas got shut off today and I'm about to fucking lose my shit. Um, 
but when you're writing a poem and you're writing um, concise and the whole deal, do it like you're talking to your best friend. Because you know when you talk to your best friend, your best friend it gives you leeways on emotion. Like if I'm talking to, um, I don't know, some person on the corner, I'm not going to, I'm going to hold back. I'm not going to fucking go into like every fucking arrange range of mo emotion that I could fucking get into. But like when you're talking to your friend, you could fucking yell a little bit and your friend's just like, oh, they're just expressing themselves. That's fine. I know they're not really upset with me, you know, because we're, we're best, we're besties. We can do the shit. You can fucking cry in front of your friend and your friend's going to fucking console you. You're going to get mad. And you know what you're, you're going to say? You know what this motherfucker did? My fucking old man, you know what he fucking did to me? This piece of shit, no good motherfucker. And you know what your friend's going to say? Yeah, that bastard, that motherfucking piece of shit. And your friend's going to get all fucking mad with you. That's how your poetry should be. Your poetry should make, when you're talking about something that makes you mad, your poetry should make your readers go, yeah, God damn it, that's right. And the way you do that is by being real, being open, and fucking being yourself and talking to your readers like they're your best friend. You don't want to talk to your readers like it's some fucking like medical exam room and you're like, the sky was so blue that it blew the blue blue. You know, like you want to embrace your reader and the way to do that is to treat your reader like a fucking human being, treat them like a person and open yourself up to them when you're doing that. And again, I know I'm talking about poetry, but this transcends medium. This is the same with every single fucking thing you do. And again, we'll talk about more of that later. Um, let's see here. Um, I kind of went on a tangent there. Um, Oh, yeah. And the reason why we're writing, especially starting out, why we're writing about us is because <clears throat> you are unique, but also nobody knows you like you do. Nobody knows your struggles like you do. Nobody knows your anguish like you do. No one knows your joys, your highs, your lows <clears throat> like you do. You are the only person who knows that? And what better source material than yourself? Because you have everything. You have every single thing about you, like a book, inside you. And all you have to do is take it from here and give it to somebody else. And again, nobody has to read this stuff. This is exercises to show you how to do this. And once you do that... <clears throat> You could start doing that in other mediums, like um, in novels, like a lot of books I've written, a lot of the characters in the same book will be different parts of me. Like, like this character does this one weird little thing and he does it because in his past this happened. Well, that's for me. But in the same book, the character that he's talking to had something completely different happen and has this whole different like part of his life. That is also part of my life. Mm -hmm. And then you'll start, once you start getting good at this and start being able to pull this out like that, you'll start pulling stuff. And this is when your friends and your family will start getting very angry with you. You, you will start pulling stuff out of their lives and putting them into characters. And you will start doing this from this person and put that into characters. And then those people will read your stuff and then they will say, what the fuck was that? Was, it, was, was that about me? And you go, dude, okay, not everything's about you. <sighs> Jeez. Oh, man. Yeah, I've had some uh, issues. And um, I think, uh, oh, yeah, that's a whole other thing. Um, I had a friend get really fucking livid at me for sharing um some stuff about her in a poem and um, got this fucking nasty snide ass fucking email about what a piece of shit motherfucker I was and how they're never talking to me again. So I basically took that email and did line breaks in it and turned that into a, another poem. So suck it. Ugh. 
let's see mindy says well this is inspiring and i can see this being really good for me i usually find it really hard to open up to people mindy i couldn't fucking agree with you more um people are hard work i don't know another way of putting that um I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know if this is like an astrological thing or if this is like a personality type thing. But for me, when I'm around people and like there's times when I'm like, you know what? I feel like maybe I should open up about blah, blah, blah. And then I'm right about to do it. <clears throat> and then um, the people who I'm with will just start talking about themselves or something like that and some problem they have. And I'm like, uh, some fucking problem they have. But then um, they never stop. And it just keeps going and going and going and going. And then I, I say to myself, you know what? I will share this stuff about me if somebody asks how I'm doing. And then you put this expectation on the room and then you realize no one ever fucking asks you how you're doing. <clears throat> and um, that's when you start going, oh my God, I have the most shallow friends on the fucking planet. Um, and to me, for a long time, I thought that was just how it is in LA or in Southern California and stuff like that. But then I talk to people all over the world and they have the exact same fucking problems. So this isn't just a shallow LA thing. It's a fucking everywhere thing. But um, but yeah, um, opening up to people is really hard because for a lot of us, we feel like we need to have that opening before we could even open up. We need to have the permission from the person we want to open up to that it's okay for us to open up. And if we never feel safe or we never feel comfortable to do that, we never fucking do that. And the thing that hurts more than anything is when we don't get that from the people that we fucking love and the people we fucking care about and the people who are supposed to be there for us. And I'm not saying what they're doing is wrong, but it's just that's not in their wheelhouse. And there's so many of us, especially the creatives, the introverts, where we're just yearning for someone to fucking give a shit and to act like they fucking care and to just say these little words so we could throw that stuff out. But a lot of times we don't get that. And so what we end up doing is putting it into our work. And now it, like I'm actually pretty okay with people not wanting to fucking know about me because again, this is something we will talk about too. But when you give that to other people, it's hard to, take it back to put it in your writing. So what I always say to do, if something's bothering you, you write it first and get the spite and like whatever super emotions you have, get that on the paper and then go talk to the person. Because it's, you know how people say like, why don't you cool off for a day or two before you like blah, blah, blah. If you do this, if you just like write it first, like you could go talk to the person an hour later and you'll be much more level headed. Um, but again, this is what I'm talking about with a lot of this stuff will help you in life. Okay. And it's just little things like this that keep popping up. Um, so let's see, uh, what else are you talking about here? Oh yes. Um, so now, um, let's get to what you're actually going to be writing today. So, um, real quick, just so people go, well, I don't know if I could write a poem because I'm going to get over, go, 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 go. I don't know if I could write a poem because I don't really know like how the line should look and all this other stuff. So I'm going to give you some kind of specific ways to do this. <clears throat> so this right here, um, this is my July chat book, by the way, um, so it's the Type Hard um, Poetry on Writing Volume 1 book. Now, those of you who have taken the course before, you got um, a digital copy of this. And um, so what I want to do is um, actually, 
Yeah, let's do that. So anyone who's in the chat right now, if you email me at, um, and this is for the live stream, if you're here for the live stream, if you email me at um, I hate Matt Walt, gmail.com and just say like, I mean, I remember everyone who's in the chat right now and say that you were here or whatever, I'll send you the uh, PDF of this um, if you want. And um, I need to come up with a good way to do giveaways. I'm going to do a giveaway of this tomorrow. I got to figure out a good way to do that. Okay. <clears throat> but anyway, so what we have here is just like lines. Okay. And on here, what I want you to do with the poem that you're going to write, um, just how the line breaks go, do it like however you talk. So for instance, like right here, like we'll be like, each line is a thing that I say, let's say. So just however you breathe, however you, oh, hey, man, how you doing? Um, however you talk, however you breathe, just write it like that for right now. So it would be like, right now, that's a line. How I'm talking to you is the next line. What I'm looking for you to do is the next line. So however you speak, whatever your cadence is, every time you would normally break, just hit return and that's going to be your next line. Um, so that's how your poem for this thing could be. Now, when we get into actual um, enjambments and shit like that and line breaks, you could do whatever the fuck you want. If you want your poem to just be one long fucking line and just have it keep going and going and going and going and going, fucking do that. I don't care. It's your art. You could do it any way you fucking want. But for this right here, just do it like that. However you say a line, and then the next line, and then the next line. But what I want you to do, this poem you're going to write right now, I want the first line of this poem to be the happiest day in my life. And you could either put was after that. You could put will be after that. You could put is if you wanted to. The happiest day in my life. That is your fucking writing prompt. Now, if this is something that you've thought about in the past, like if you're remembering something, I need you to remember everything about that day. If, if the happiest day in your life was the day you bought um, a new house, like the first house you've ever bought, okay? And the happiest day was you walking through that door and seeing that empty shell of the home that you're about to create. And talking in your in your head like about like imagining where every piece of furniture is going to go and then rooms that you don't have furniture for yet what are you going to do to that room and you're just walking through and hearing your footsteps the smell of fresh paint you know like what are these things if the happiest day in your life was the day your kid was born what was that like like can you like taste like the air, like what about it made it the happiest day for you? Is it an ironic happy day where everything you're going to talk about is fucking horrific and horrible? You know, how horrific is it? How horrible is it? What do things feel like? What do things taste like? What do things smell like? What sounds are you hearing? What colors are flooding your vision? Just, and if you have to like write some, like jot down some notes, like, as I'm talking about this, you'll, you already know like what the happiest day in your life was. And as I'm saying these words, little images are popping up in your head right now. Jot those things down. What are those things? And this doesn't have to be a long poem. It doesn't have to be a short poem. Like it could be whatever you want it to be. But all I want you to do is be honest with yourself. Trust your pen, trust your words and write from inside what you observed reflected out to me make me feel the things you felt we're best friends now okay we're besties tell me what happened help me feel those things if it was some dirtbag motherfucker screwing you over make me yell that dirtbag motherfucker you know like what is happening what are 
what things are you going to be telling me? Like, how are you going to make me feel what you feel? Okay. So that's it. That is the thing. So does anybody have any questions? And again, I hate Matt Wall at gmail.com. If you want to write your poem and send it to me, if you want to write it and keep it to yourself, that's fine too. But let's do some quick Q and a, it doesn't have to be quick. I went a little longer than I thought it was going to. So apologies there. The coffee finally kicked in and the Gatorade finally made me feel like I was not a fucking George Romero extra. Ooh. Damn, that's orangey. I'm not going to lie. I've never liked orange Gatorade. And I don't think I do now. There's a poem for you. I don't like orange Gatorade. Uh, so we're just chilling. If you guys have questions, ask them in the chat. Um, should your poem include any punctuation? Mindy, that is such a fucking good question. And I'm glad you asked it because I actually can't believe that I didn't talk about this. Punctuation, capitalization, quotes, question marks, commas, hyphens, whatever. You can use it if you want. You could throw it in the trash if you want. It completely doesn't matter. You are the creator. You are the mad scientist. You are the anarchist. You can do whatever you want. Um, as far as my poetry goes... Um, it's so funny, too, because since I started this, the first class I ever did to now, I've already changed some of the things that I do. Like, um, I used to always capitalize my eyes. Um, like when I would say, like, I went here, I would always make sure my eyes were capitalized because I thought it made me feel um, better about myself because I was in a place where... Um, especially early on, I felt like I needed that pick me up. And if I kept lowercase and I, I felt like it was going to make me feel less. And so that was like a big thing for me. So, um, but now I don't capitalize my eyes because the new Scrivener update made it impossible to, like if you click the thing off that um, capitalizes each new line, it also will not capitalize eyes anymore. And so just for me having flow when I'm typing, I'm like, fuck it. I don't even give a shit anymore. I'm fine. I don't need a big eye to make myself feel like a good guy anymore. I need my flow. So, um, so yeah, so that's just that. Um, I usually don't use periods. Um, I don't really use commas. I do use question marks because when I ask questions and poems, like that is something I want the reader to know because when I'm asking that question, I'm trying to make them think about something. So I will put question marks in, but I've, I've honestly been considering doing periods now. Like just like the last few days I was thinking, I'm like, should I start experimenting with periods, you know, and you can, if you want, you don't have to, but again, you're the boss. You are the creator. You can do anything. Um, Thomas asks, do I just send the poem to your email when done? Sure. Yeah. Um, just send it. And um, I guess the subject line should be like um, day one poem. That would be good. That would be nice. That would be a good way to do it. So are there any more questions? <clears throat> Let's see here. 
You know what? Let me let me do this. You guys go ahead and if you're working on your poem right now, I'll give you some time to work on it. And if you have questions about something while you're doing it, because I was thinking about it, and you'll probably end up with more questions while you're doing this, especially if it's for the first time. So let's, I'll, I'll stay on for like another 10 minutes. And if you guys have questions, um, just leave them in the thing and I will um, try to be not distracting and I will be quiet and um, I'll come back in 10 minutes. Yeah, let's let's do that. That's good. How do I do this now?
Okay, if you're still writing, just pause the stream until you're done. Um, or if you want to take a break and go back to it when we're done with this, you can do that too. But um, are there any other questions? And I will answer a question that I thought of while we were, while this 10 minutes went by. I was thinking to myself, <clears throat> Maybe I should say this. So here's what I'm going to say. Um, if you think that this is going to be all like bunny rabbits and um, flowers and fun, pretty stuff, this will get dark as shit in the days to come, just so everybody knows. So if some of you were wanting some like super dark fucking shit, you're going to get that too. So, um, but I, I thought we would, we would start it kind of lighter. Um, yeah, there, there are millions of emotions out there and we're going to try to hit as many of them as we can, but I finally got some coffee. So I'm having piping hot coffee and it's like 90 plus effing degrees outside. Idiot. Oh man. Go get them, guys. Jesus Christ. Idiots. <clears throat> All right. So as this is wrapping up here, um, tomorrow we're going to be doing, um, we're going to be focusing on bite-sized art. That is going to be the, um, the big, um, Okay, so let's let's see some questions here. Mindy says, I had trouble thinking of what to write about. I thought about my wedding day, but actually it was really stressful. When I thought of the perfect moment, the words started to flow. There you go. That's perfect. All writing prompts are are little things to get your brain going. So next time if I say I want you to write about the best pizza you ever had. And that made you think of the time you went to a pizza place and got robbed at gunpoint. Write about getting robbed at gunpoint. That's fine. Like, it's just an exercise to get you to that level, you know? Like, so again, whatever I say, like if I say write about the happiest thing and then you just think of the perfect moment, boom, do it. <clears throat> And the poet's artifact said, why is the happiest day of my life still dark as fuck? Yeah, no shit, right? Um, I was thinking of what mine is going to be. Um, I'm going to write that when we're done here. And um, it was a very stressful day, a day full of fucking tears, a day of um, fear but at the end of it all, like, it was the happiest moment of my life. So, um, Thomas, exactly, dude. Writing about my kids being born, a mixed set of emotions. It's both dark and happy. Seriously, like, that's, that's going to be, like, what I'm writing about, my kid being born. And, um. Oh, and not only that, like the kid being born and then the pressure of you not fucking that kid up over the next 18 years. Um, that that's, that's, uh, that's some heavy stress there. And, um, especially if we judge about how our parents did with us, it's like, Oh, fuck role models, huh? God damn it. Like, how are we going to do this? Um, Nate Colt says, Mindy, I had the same thing with the wedding day, but one moment of it made it all better. And that's what's coming out. That's what I'm talking about. Whatever it is, just do it. Um, when you catch the thing, it's 
kind of like fishing if any of you guys fish. Um, my parents done fucked up. I decided to write poems and stories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, but like fishing is kind of like a, a neat example. Like when you when you go fishing, you go there, you cast your line, and you wait silently, and you wait, and you take in the atmosphere, you take in nature, and then suddenly something pulls on that fucking line, and now you got to wrestle that fucker out of the water, okay? And that's kind of what writing's like. You you cast and you wait and you wait and then once you get a nibble on that fucking hook dude you fucking yank that shit you try to get that fucker on that hook dude that is so much like what writing's like and then if you're really good and you're in a really good spot you just throw your line out and as soon as the bait hits the fucking water a fish is on it you're not even having to do anything you might as well just like walk out with a basket and just like scoop fish in like days like that have happened too, where it's just been easy as shit and you just do everything like that. But for me, the most important thing is the flow. Okay. Like you should not agonize over writing. It should just come to you and it should be easy. It should be like fucking water. It should just, like, you you turn on the tap, the water comes out. Um, it shouldn't be, like, you putting your thumb over the end of a hose and, like, little sprays shoot out, and when it comes out, it's all fucking crazy and all sorts of pressure. It should just flow out of you. There should not be agony in this at all. And as you do this more and more, you will learn um, how to kind of turn that tap, how to get that to just go. And that's like when I go through all my my type hard, type fast, type daily, type drunk, and there's more now, but like when I go through all those things, like that's when type daily really comes in. Like you you don't want to force anything, but repetition creating habits, all of these things make it so much easier for you to take what's inside here and have it come out your fingers, come in, out your fingertips, onto the keyboard, through the pen, onto the paper, whatever um, analogy or medium you want to use. Whenever you do those things, it makes it simple. It makes it easy. And that's what art is. Art is just creating with ease um yeah so does anyone have any other questions here because now i feel like i'm almost rambling with hand motions and that might be the coffee i took a bunch of vitamin b today too so i'm going to be bouncing off the effing walls today man good god good god man all right, so for those of you who want to turn your poems in, um, either on the replay video, post it in the comments, or email it to me at ihatematwall at gmail.com. And tomorrow we're doing bite size art. So um, same mat time, same mat channel. That is silly. I can't believe I just did that. Um, I completely respect you guys for, um, giving me shit for that. Thanks so much for this, man. It's been so helpful already. I'm so fucking glad. I'm so glad. I really, really want it to be helpful for all of you. So if, if I wrote in my notebook, should I take a pic? You can totally do that. Yeah, for real. You could totally do that. That's perfectly fine. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Either way, either way, it doesn't matter. You could type it out and send it to me, or you could just take a pic of it. That's fine, too. Okay, guys, so tomorrow, noon, noon o'clock Pacific, 
and we will do this next bit, okay? So um, until next time, everybody, type hard, do your thing, do what you do, create good stuff, and um, you got me writing about something I never really thought I could turn into words. Speaking the poem out loud with my cadence is super helpful. Oh my gosh, guys. I'm so, first off, I'm so glad to hear that. But speaking your poetry out loud, especially um, either when you're writing it or right after you write it to like kind of tighten it up is so important. And again, we're going to have a whole day where we just go over where we're going over tools of how to help you do that thing, because that is a very, very important thing. Okay. So until tomorrow at noon, guys, I will talk to you later. Send me your stuff and I'll see you guys then. Thank you so much for being here, guys.